Welcome to the quick session today on cloud migration. So we're not going to focus in particularly on features of cloud. Really the objective of today is to share a bit of learning with you from existing customers at Protocol that have examined the proposition for moving to cloud, those that have come to cloud as cloud first, or those that are looking to migrate from existing on-prem solutions. Just wanted to share a few bits of practical learning from them about how the, they found that process. Most of you, I think, know me, but just in case, the most important thing for me to say at this point is I'm not technical. Uh, I've been looking at managed file transfer now for well over a decade, and it's beginning to show by the look of me. Uh, so I know what all of the solutions do. I know what matters to you. Uh, but if we need to get into the detail of how these things work, then we need to have a conversation with Brent, Richard or Chris later today. Happy to direct the query to whoever is appropriate for you. My job, I guess, here today is to share a little bit of learning about the practicalities of how these things work rather than the details of how they're configured. So why cloud? I think it would be fair to say that over the last couple of years, we've definitely seen some shifts in the way people work and some things that have influenced this drive to the cloud. The simple and the most obvious one is working from home during COVID. I know the whole team at Protocol were all at home very quickly and stayed that way for quite some time. That changed the demands on the business in terms of being able to share information securely. What we also saw is several businesses realizing that perhaps they'd furloughed key staff and therefore didn't have the depth of managed file transfer expertise they needed to run their systems. So definitely raised some questions about how do I want to do this moving forward? And finally, I think the other thing we've seen is a real understanding that perhaps they'd got more mission critical data flows flowing over their managed file transfer solutions than they had first thought. And that's triggered two interesting sets of projects for us. One, lots of customers looking to go active, active on-prem, and two, others looking at cloud to see if that's a way of achieving those resilience goals that they now have within the business. I guess one other thought, we've definitely seen perhaps a focus on at a wider business level, where do we add the value, what's our USP, and how do we ensure that we've got resources focused on that? So do we need our resources focused on patching and server management, or do we need them focused on the things that really make a competitive edge and a difference for us as an organisation? And I guess just to tie back in with Gartner, uh, following James's conversation this morning, they've done some research looking at uh, cloud adoption and found that organizations are 17 times more likely to increase spending on cloud. That was in their Cloud Driven Business Innovations report. But one of the things that they were suggesting was actually, this is both an opportunity and a threat. There's a real opportunity to do things differently, but there's also a bit of a cost shock threat where people don't necessarily understand the difference between the two and have to think about what they're actually going to transfer across. So let's get on to Move It Cloud in particular. Three key questions that I get asked all the time. Is it hosted in the UK? And I'm delighted to be able to say the answer to that is now yes. So the primary site for Move It Cloud is in in the UK and the secondary site in UK West. Second question I get asked all the time is SLA, as I referenced earlier, that's a key driver. 99.9% .9 uptime SLA on Move It Cloud, and you can check the status of Move It Cloud at any point on status.moveitcloud.com. And finally, security. So Move It Cloud is SOC 2 certified, one of only a very small number of managed file transfer services in the cloud that is. For those of you not familiar with SOC 2, that's the US equivalent to ISO 27001. Uh, so that's always well received by your information security teams. And there are also reports around PCI DSS and HIPAA for those of you for whom those are applicable. And if PCI DSS is not your thing from a credit card perspective, it's still a really useful one because it's such a good uh, security brief. It does help when you're talking to your information security teams. That you've got access to all those responsibility control matrix, compliance reporting and so on to ensure that you are set up correctly to meet the security requirements of your business. So move it cloud. Brent touched upon it briefly in his roadmap session and has given you some of this information, but I just wanted to touch upon a little bit more detail about what progress do and what you need to do if you're looking at Move It Cloud. 
So progress at this point to run responsible for capacity planning to ensure that all the resources are in line for your utilization. They become responsible for server maintenance and patching to ensure everything's up to date. They're responsible for software upgrades and scanning. And finally, of course, they're going to monitor the servers 24 seven and fix any issues that may crop up and do annual reviews against the kind of security compliance requirements we've just seen, PCI, HIPAA, SOC 2, as well as pen testing and any mitigations that come from a result of that. Key to note is what you've got to do. You are still responsible for configuration, branding, security settings such as password and authentication. For a couple of Move It Cloud customers, Protocol already provide a managed service around that to help reduce that burden still further. And if that's something that's of interest to you, please reach out to your account manager. Overall, Move It Cloud still provides the visibility and control, simple, easy to use interface that you're familiar with and helps you meet your compliance needs. Important to note here, though, that Move It Cloud is predominantly Move It Transfer in the cloud. So those of you that are familiar with Move It will know that Move It comes in two separate parts, transfer and automation. And the solution that we are offering in Move It Cloud is Move It Transfer. A couple of things you need to consider. The cloud MFD marketplace is still relatively young, perhaps not as young as the baby in the photo, but it is still a relatively young market. And therefore, not everything is perhaps uh, there in the way that you would want it to be. As an example, Move It Automation is not currently available in the cloud. It's only available as a single tenant solution. Um, please come talk to me if you want to know more about that. So what are the couple of the differences that particularly as existing users you might need to be aware of? So here's a few administration differences. Firstly, email server. So you'll know that email notifications is a fairly key part of Move It Transfer. At the moment, these are all sent via Mailjet from servers in Paris. That on the screen is the standard email address. That can be configured and changed for you, but just need to add that to the project plan and all that needs to be tested and built in to the go live strategy. Obviously, as a cloud-based service, you don't have control over recovery time objectives, so you may need to think about that for your internal SLAs. And in addition for your information security team, you can't change the ports that are used, and there are uh, requirements that Progress will assist you with the uploading of certificates into the system. Again, we have just seen some issues with that with information security, have had some concerns about that. As standard, it would be a different certificate than your on-prem solution, but it is possible to upload the certificate from your existing Move It Transfer into the cloud, as long as you purchase the custom URL option. And finally, on administration, just a note about logs, that there are some changes, as you can see there, about what logging is available to you. A couple of things that, from a practical perspective, no FTP on Move It Cloud. Hopefully for most of you, that's great news. Um, certainly it's one that most of our customers have been trying to uh, close down over the last few months and years. So uh, that's definitely a positive. Active Directory, uh, that hooking is via LDAP. Actually, most customers on Move It Cloud use SAML. Uh, I'm not going to read all of the lists on here. A couple of other ones to flag for you. Business Activity Monitor. Um, some of you will have seen a webinar that we ran about a year ago looking at Business Activity Monitor. It's a dashboard, an external dashboard that integrates really well with Move It and gives you that overall view of what's happening within your infrastructure. There's more information on that in the exhibit area if that's of interest to you, but it's not available right now in cloud. ICAP is not currently available in Move It Cloud, so that impacts your options for data loss prevention and antivirus. And the gateway is not used in Move It Cloud. Now, it's not used by a lot of our customers uh, for on-prem, because obviously, historically, Move It was designed to sit in the DMZ. Uh, the gateway is replaced in Azure by the Azure security functionality, including Azure load balancers. So just a flag, really, that those are a few of the differences in terms of features. Pricing. Those of you that have Move It will be familiar with the perpetual license model. Pay up front, buy the licenses, use it as long as you like. Uh, pay annual maintenance fee to get access to my lovely support team um, or for uh, advanced cyber customers to get access to Chris and also to get all the upgrades that you need for the software. 
On Move It Cloud, slightly different approach. It's an annual subscription. You pay a one-off setup charge. And then as standard, there are usage charges based on the number of users. And you have options for basic Move It Transfer or Move It Transfer with the ad hoc modules and capabilities. If you burst the five gig uh, bandwidth and storage per user that are set as standard, then there are additional bandwidth and storage costs. If you have large numbers of users, then there is an alternative model that's based on buying terabytes of storage and bandwidth usage rather than worrying about the numbers of users you've got. So again, if that's of interest, please do reach out to your relevant account manager. And finally, a little gift from me from Gartner. This is how to write a cloud strategy from one of the Gartner documents. Just thought it might be helpful for any of those of you that are being asked to put something in writing. So I hope that's been useful. I hope that we've just been able to share a little bit of practical learning, some things to be aware of, things to think about when you're looking at cloud. If there are any questions remaining, please do post them in the chat window. If we don't get back to them now, we'll take them forward into this afternoon session and make sure that we cover them in the Q&A. But thank you for joining me today. I hope now that you go and get some lunch. Um, hopefully your voucher has arrived and that you're able to treat yourself to something delicious at lunch. We will be back at two o'clock with a full panel of real techies who can answer any of the detailed questions that you wish to submit. It will be great to see as many of you as possible on this live session this afternoon. And I look forward to hosting you then. Thank you.